I can record better if I actually turn it on. Chapter 2 is the same as Chapter 3 problems with two, two additions, as I said. You add acceleration, but we've already talked about acceleration. It's kind of hard to do Chapter 2 without it, in my opinion. And we also go into two dimensions. So what we did in Chapter 2 is things like, gosh, you have a car that's moving along at 10 meters per second, uh, constant, and it goes for five seconds. Then, gosh, I guess it went 50 meters. And you could also throw things in there to say, well, gosh, if it went uh, 60 meters, it must have sped up. How much did it speed up? In fact, let's try that just for giggles. Let's suppose you had something that's moving at 10 meters per second. And after five seconds, it had gone 60 meters. Can you please find the other two unknowns? Of course, you have to remember what the unknowns are, but you remember the five-step method. We already did the sketch. Now do the other, the other steps, please, while I place pause. Okay, assuming my math is all right, I went ahead and wrote out the SAT VIVF. Given was S, T, and VI. I'm looking for A and VF. I uh, guessed one of the three equations. S equals 1 half AT squared plus your starting velocity times time. Plugged in my numbers. Uh, plug and chug, and lo and behold, out it came to 0.8 meters per second. If I accelerated at 0.8 meters per second uh, for five seconds, I guess I sped up by four. I was already going 10, so I must end up at 14. Or VF is equal to VI plus AT. I guess you could say VF minus VI is equal to AT. So VF minus VI over T is equal to A. Actually, I know A, don't I? So let's not do it that way. We can just go straight and say it's 14. Hey, assuming my acceleration is constant, which of course it always is in this class. We never have constant uh, accelerations that are not constant. Uh, within time intervals. Otherwise, you cannot use the, the kinematic equations, those three equations I had you guys memorize, which you'll use again and again and again and again and again and again. In fact, you will stop using them in chapter 24. They just keep coming again. Hey, if I ended up at 14 and I started at 10, is my average not 12? And if I went for five seconds, I guess that's 60 meters. Mr. Duncan, which method do you want us to use? Do you want us to use this average velocity thing, or do you want us to use the other kinematic thing? I don't care. You may use any method except this one. What method is that? Cheating. Yeah, the cheating method. Thank you. That is just dumb. That is absolutely dumb. You get an automatic zero, and you give up any right to ever have a test retake again. It is death. Don't ever cheat. It's just not worth it. I'll never let you do a retest or anything and a zero on that one. And Oh, well. The acceleration of gravity. If I let an object fall, let it go from my hand from rest, it will fall. If I put a little speedometer on it in, uh, say, feet per second, it would say, after one second, that it's falling downward. That's where I put the negative sign. It's falling downward at 32 feet per second. After two seconds, it's going 64 feet per second. I guess I could put this at miles per hour. I don't happen to know what it is. I, we could convert it. Now we don't have time. But that works out to be about 9.8 meters per second. 9.8 meters is about the same as 32 feet within a couple centimeters. We're just going to round off. So if I have something that is falling under the influence of gravity, by the way, we give it a special name, free fall, there will be an acceleration in the downward direction of 9.8 meters per second squared. Did I write meters per second? Shame all over me. So 
So after uh, two seconds, I will be going 64 feet per second, or whatever 2 times 9.8 is, meters per second. Please note, if I throw the potato upward, it's 60 meters a second. Do, do you mind, just for our purposes, for the moment, if we round that up to 10? Instead of calling it 9.8, I hate dealing with 9.8. On the test, you'll deal with 9.8. Unless I say the acceleration of the planet of this gravity is 15, then you use 15. If you're on the moon, it's 2. If you're on Mars, it's 3.7. If you're on Jupiter, it's something else. Remember that next time you go to Jupiter. <laughs> but you'll have, um, your acceleration will be whatever it is. For our purposes, we're going to say it's 10, negative. If I throw it up at 40 and it slows down 10, how fast is it moving? 30. You're awesome. So here I am down here wearing my, uh, my Irish kilt. And I have it throw off my hand. It's going to go up and then it's going to come on back down. Here it's moving 40. One second later it's moving 30. By the way, if it went 40 and now it's going 30, what was my average? 35. 35. So during the first second, how far should it go? It should go 35 meters. After another second, it will slow down to 20. Then it will slow down to 10. And then eventually at the top, it will stop. How many seconds will it take to reach the top? This is rocket science. Five seconds? No, go four seconds, right? 30, 20, 10, 0. And then it's going to go downward. Come on back down at 10, 20, 30, 40. I guess ne technically I could put negative signs on there. It'll take eight seconds to take the round trip. Four up, four back down. Are we cool? Please note that right here, at, 30, at uh, this time here, the one second, it's going upward at 30, but what's the acceleration? It's going to be negative 10, or 9.8, actually, in reality. Now, here's the news flash of chapter 3. What you are doing up and down has nothing to do with sideways. If I were to throw the object at some kind of an angle, such that it reached the same height, then that would tell me that my starting velocity in the upward direction was 40. VI in the Y direction is 40. I have no idea what it is in the X direction, but we could figure it out, which is what we're going to do on Tuesday. But the key on this chapter is what you're doing sideways has nothing to do with your up and down. So here's how you do it these problems. You treat the x direction completely independent of the y direction. Because here's the news flash. Gravity only pulls you down. Gravity doesn't pull you right or left. Shocking, I know. See you Monday.